combination cast. Um, combining Artist Life podcast this week with an episode of Behind the Curtain, which is something I do on my main YouTube channel and add to my uh, artist personal journalist um, uh, podcast as well. So Behind the Curtain is really all about just talking about vlogging. That's how it started uh, before the podcast and anything else. I just started vlogging a little over a year ago. So it's talking about just kind of like every once in a while when I kind of see like changes that are happening uh, within me because of vlogging, because of documenting um, the process, like me changing the process and the process changing me, basically. So there's not very many episodes of that. But... Uh, I have noticed some things lately, and also it's very relevant to art stuff because what I'm talking about, as you already know from the title, is expressing the same idea in different mediums. Um, using different media to express the same idea I think is very useful, and it's something that I've done a couple different times in my life in various circumstances. So, we'll get into that. The first time I can really think of me executing that, the same idea, premise, feeling, whatever, um, in two different artistic forms was with my BFA exhibition. So, um, or I guess it was before then. That was the formal setting, but I was doing it a little bit before then. So some of this is going to relate to the last episode of Artist Life Podcast where I talked about the history, my history with writing. Um, so there'll be some kind of going back to that as well, and I won't go into a lot of detail here because that's already been recorded and you can reference that for all of the details. So I was writing these songs um, specifically with this band that I'm talking about right now. It was you know, between 2012 and 2015. Uh, my exhibition, I think, was 2013, uh, I believe. Um, and so, or 2012 or 2013. Before then, I had always thought about art as a cathartic process. I always thought about my visual art as really, really helping me cope. It was this amazing coping mechanism. I put down some paint aggressively sometimes, and then I was able to just move on. Like, I felt like, there it is, it's on the canvas, and now I've it's gone. Like, I've left that. That doesn't mean that it solves every problem or that it solves all my personal feelings, but for some reason, it's like, hey, that specific this specific day, this hour, this whatever few minutes is now resolved right there. I can point to it, I can see it, I can give it away or sell it or keep it in a closet or whatever, and there's physical evidence there of that thing. And it won't come back the same way. I won't necessarily have the exact same feeling. Um, I was able to work through it a bit through the act of painting. I was able to resolve some of those feelings. So that's the way art, visual art was for me the first couple of years that I was creating visual art in um, a knowing sense, I guess. And then um, I started writing lyrics to songs with, uh, with this band. Uh, and it was happening in other bands before this one. Um, but this is when I first noticed that I am writing about a lot of things that I'm painting about and I'm finding that even though I'm, I'm painting about the same subject more and more, even though I never used to do this in the past. And then, so as my BFA exhibition was coming up, um, I decided this was going to be the topic I was going to talk about, uh, was about if, if art is really a cathartic process for me at this point, if um, sometimes it, it isn't. Because what was happening was that I, would, I, I wrote this piece, and that thing is, it, it was the same with writing back in the day. I could write about something in that very specific feeling of maybe a broader topic that I'd revisit, but that specific feeling was gone. Um, I felt like it helped resolve things for me, and then it, it, and it didn't just come back right away, and whatever. It, it was, you know, a cathartic process. And I started to question that, because as I wrote a song, um, wrote the lyrics to a song, and had to frequently rehearse that song, and perform that song live, I was constantly revisiting the exact same words over and over and over again. It wasn't like a painting that I just, I got it down and pieced to that painting and now I can move on with something else, um, maybe express it in a different way. Like, the delivery of vocal performance varies from time to time, but the words never did and the feeling never did for me. It was very rare that I didn't feel these intense emotions, like when I, you know, put it into the writing, that when I 
like created vocal patterning for it and whatever else when I was performing it I generally felt the same way most of the time and the majority of things I was speaking about were very negative things that I wanted to purge that I wanted to resolve in some way but the act of repeating this over and over again and in such an intense way I found that that not only was that just a problem in and of itself because I never got desensitized to it yet like I had other coping mechanisms that somehow like came with that, like on stage, trying to be self-deprecating to deal with stage fright um, and, and use humor in a way. And I was also like, all these crazy chemicals are running through my body because I'm just like sweating and performing and I'm really happy on stage. But simultaneously, I'm like screaming about stuff that I'm not happy about. So in the middle of a song, I'm very much in the song. And then on either side of the song, either introducing the track or, or, or whatever it is. It's on either side of it, I'm usually smiling and, and, and happy and, like, laughing and, you know, anxious, too. Like, the, the performing gives me stage fright. There's a lot of anxiety before I step on the stage. And once I'm there, it's a little better. Um, or much better. But it's still there. So anyway, that was one thing. But I also found that it was seeping into my painting. And I was like, how is it that I am now, for the first time really painting about the same subject. It wasn't coming out the same way, but it was like, man, this is getting into my work like a lot because it's on my mind a lot because it is in, you know, the music that I'm rehearsing weekly um, at the bare, bare minimum, you know, once or twice a week by myself and then usually with the band as well. And it was just like, man, like, and then performing on top of that sometimes. So it happened like three times in a week. And this, you know, I was in this band for three years, right? And... But at this time, you know, I was like questioning, like, okay, I need to work with these songs. I need to, I need to really, really represent them visually on purpose. Like, take the name of the song and this is what it's about visually. Rather than just like, ah, I'm getting all these feelings still rising up or, or like having bad dreams or whatever because um, I can't shake it. I mean, over time, I think I would have been more desensitized and been able to shake it off easier and easier and easier over time. And also, I mean, like, you get new songs in there and, like, old songs leave and whatever, right? Um, if you were to be in a band for, you know, a long, long time. Three years is not that long. Um, but that's, that's what I was deciding to, to do. So then I, I, on purpose, I decided, okay, this song title is the name of this piece. And then I altered the, I had it in parentheses something else. Um, but I chose four different songs at that point and made them into visual art pieces. And, you know, with, along with this question of evidence of, you know, following some stuff with Pollock, like visual um, evidence of the art being made in the action of making it was the art. And this is the evidence of that. Uh, that was a part of it, but it was just mostly about me questioning whether this process is helping me or hurting me because You know again on stage the repetition of this thing wasn't really Helping sometimes like it was at first and then I found like yeah, is it I don't know um, So that was kind of one of the first times I really noticed yo. I am expressing my Artistic creative ideas whatever expressing myself my through you know creative means in two different mediums, but it was the very same subject. Um, and and it was very purposeful to just explore what that was doing to me and, and how this whole thing was working. And since then, I haven't really made much of a point to do it until recently. And that's why I wanted to, to talk about this behind the curtain stuff. Um, and, and also, you know, just talk about how that can be useful and how other times it, it maybe is, is not so much. So, I found that something I've talked about before is external processing, that label that someone introduced me to over a year ago that I, I really was like, whoa, like I get that. that, that that label applies to me in such a way I get excited by having such a direct like, oh, this is something that's helpful, this is me, this is like perfect. Um, That's a, a huge reason as to why I started vlogging or having these conversations to begin with. Um, with all my vlogging activity, I mean, there's like a weekly vlog about just activities I'm doing during the week, and then there's a conversation that, that is a part of that. And then sometimes there's more other things about art process or, you know, stories in my, of my past or whatever. Um, 
But the conversation was something that I recognized helped me because I've always been helped by conversation. I recognized this a long time ago that having conversation with friends is very helpful to me, not just because I value, you know, the opinions of people that I'm trusting with this conversation and they can have good input and an opportunity to make me see things in a different way, but it was because just by the act of me talking out loud, I was able to understand things about myself in the way that I felt in a way that I couldn't do it before. If I was writing these things down, it was different. But by the act of talking out loud, um, because I was speaking faster than my brain was processing things in a certain way, I was able to just blurt things out. And so I translated that to talking to the camera like I am now over a year ago, and I found that that helped me immensely. And was like, wow, like by talking out loud, it doesn't have to be to anyone else. Like. I'm just talking sometimes so fast when I get excited about something that I say something and something clicks and I'm like, yo, I actually feel that way and I didn't even know I felt that way or I didn't understand that feeling the same way. Uh, I also find that, I mean, I learn a lot of in, in conversations. Like I, unfortunately, you know, conversations and arguments with partners sometimes lead to me having this greater understanding in that moment. But unfortunately, if it wasn't for that type of conversation or that style of conversation, I might not have reached that conclusion right away. Um, because again, when I get worked up and I start talking about something passionately and, and quickly, my brain doesn't have enough time to process things in a certain way and slow down and choose things carefully. No, no, it just kind of like, the filter is, is not completely gone, but it, there, there's way less of a filter. So I'm able to understand things in this new way that I, I just didn't, I didn't recognize that I felt that way. So I found that was really, really useful, and that's why I'm still doing it, because it helps me learn about myself. But um, I was, you know, thinking lately of, of writing a blog, something I've been thinking about actually for years, and just haven't gotten on it and figured out my WordPress and try to organize everything with, like, this OCD tendency that I have to make things ultra-organized and, and have, like... <laughs> chronological order of all these archived things and then and then start it and then publish it for everyone to see it and then keep it up regularly, whatever. But I've got a little bit of a push. Um, my partner recently started a blog a couple weeks ago discussing some things in the same style that I've wanted to discuss things and write them. And I realized some of these things that I'm going to be writing about are going to be things that I vlog about too because I want to take a subject sometimes and just talk about it. And... I thought, would that be redundant? I don't think it will be redundant. I generally don't write anything down before I create, you know, a vlog or a podcast episode or whatever, when I talk to the GoPro. I generally just don't write anything down. Um, if it's a review, sometimes I do make notes, especially, you know, an album review or something. Um, but when it's talking about a subject or just having a regular conversation or something, I generally don't have any notes. I just, like, I have a subject in my head and I really would like to explore it. So... This, though, is, is something different, and I've been thinking about, like, well, what if I do the vlog first and then I write about it, or what if I write about it first? Will that influence too much of how I feel for talking about it out loud? Is that going to be interfering? And I haven't decided in which order I'm going to do it yet, but I really think that, because I, I, I wrote in my journal for the first time the other day, um, for the first time in a long time, I should say, years and years, like, years, that I hadn't done any legit journal writing about this is what's happening. And, and even that day, I didn't do it. Like, I wrote about... I, I basically closed the old chapters of the, the journal because I'm using the same book I wrote in years ago just to, whatever, conserve paper. I don't know. <laughs> um, and I, I basically closed that chapter and just wrote about the fact that I, I am starting this up again and I never thought I would start this up again. And just the value of writing in different forms. I write in a lot of different forms and I'm writing in a different form now already. Like, I mean, a, a new thing, again is what I meant. And by blogging, I'm like, okay, well, I'm taking this very same topic and I'm going to write it in a blog. And that forces me to slow down. It forces me to process things in a different way. Um, and, and thus, I will reach new conclusions by doing that. When I say this, I feel like it sounds so obvious that there's no point in saying it, but I know that this is going to hit different people, you know, um, or hit people differently because different people are unique and, and we're all nuanced and complex in our own ways and um, some people might 
not find this useful whatsoever. And other people might say, yeah, I've been doing this for years. I, I, I recognize this as a thing that I need to do. I write it down first. And I don't mean writing down things to prepare for, like, a speech or prepare for the vlog. Like, it's not about preparation. It's about, I'm going to express the same idea in multiple ways to see how much I can dig into that idea. I don't think, you know, writing five drafts of this thing is going to help. Um, I generally am very attracted to spontaneous art making or spontaneous isn't the right word but I mean not planning like I want immediate gratification I want to freestyle this piece like whatever it is I'm like let's pick some colors let's go this is why I work with abstract the majority of the time um, no planning involved really at all and with writing um, that's something that I do as well in conversation like I've mentioned that's something I do as well I don't really prepare for that so that's something that, that is attractive to me. So I don't, I'm not talking about using different media to prepare for the other media. Like, people write down their speeches before they say them out loud. That makes sense. But I'm just talking about using different forms of media to explore ideas. And I really think that is a very useful practice. Although I've been talking a lot about my personal, uh, my personal ideas about this. But I also wanted to kind of talk about cultural stuff. I feel like it's obvious that this is useful practice and that there's nothing wrong with it, that it isn't redundant because this is just how art seems to work. Artists influenced by art that create their version of that art. So I mentioned before that a lot of my influences come from music, from movies, from books I've read, from poetry I've read. It very rarely comes, like my visual art very rarely is influenced by someone else's visual art. Um, but if that visual art is referencing something that I'm able to catch, sometimes I go back to that original source and I'm like, okay, well that now I'm reading that book and I've decided that I want to express that visually too, because it means something to me and it makes me feel a certain kind of way. So, um, I mean, this is, this is like, I just think this is something that's done all the time, you know, and people do appreciate it. And it's not always done this way for other people, but I mean, you could think of it in how many movers, movies or adaptations from books, right? Um, someone, an artist, a director, whatever you want to call them, screenwriters and everyone else involved, someone, someone originally has an idea. It could be the producer, it could be just a direct, a writer, director. Someone has this initial idea of like, yo, Fight Club was a sick book. And I have the means to make this into a movie and I'm going to gather a bunch of people to help me do this because I think that this movie would really, I want to express the book in this new format and it reaches a new audience. So part of it is just to satisfy yourself creatively, to learn more about the subject by creating, by, by you know, um, one of the best ways to learn is to, is to teach. Um, so, I mean, by... It, by relaying the story to, to other people in this new way, I think you learn more about the story. You learn more about what it means to you. Um, and that, that happens time and time and time again. And it's not because people just don't have original ideas, ever. It's because they're, they're using a jumping off point, standing on the shoulder of giants, in order to create more original idea or to really explore this idea. And obviously they're bringing creativity to it. They're using artistic license. They're doing certain things. Um, I use Fight Club as an example just because it was on my mind the other day from a podcast I was listening to with, with Chuck and, and Joe Rogan, um, but also because it was a movie that I had seen about 10 times <laughs> before I ever knew that it was a book. And the thing is, the movie was so true to the book that when I went back to read the book, all I could do was hear the, the voices of Edward Norton and Brad Pitt in my head and visually see the movie playing out. There was, it was just so true to it. Um, but I knew that never would have happened without the book. And I often wonder, in every case where I've watched the movie a lot before I read the book, you know, if I read the book first, would I think it's as good? Um, how would I feel if this was reversed? But anyway, that's just an example of, of how I feel like it is a useful practice culturally. But I mean, that's, that's also like how many people, you know, make paintings about, uh, you know, Greek myth. Greek mythology, Roman mythology, like Leda and the Swan is this painting that I remember seeing and it was just very beautiful and striking and made me think and I was like, what is this? And then it was Leda and the Swan and I was like, wait a second, I, I vaguely remember this from, from some class that I was in in university 
And then I went back and, and you know what I mean? But if it was something that I never heard of before, it would have been the same thing. It, if with the title, I, I might have been able to be like, what is this about? Let me go look at this. And then learn about this other history. Like, this is just a thing that happens. It's just this this life feeding off life. And, and you know, in taking, inhaling media and exhaling your own. And just this, this constant cycle. And I feel like it's a beautiful cycle. I'm not talking about copying or stealing. I'm talking about... You know, I believe people are, are capable of original thought, and I don't mean just within remix culture. Like, if, we're, if you want to put this into remix culture, that's fine. But I'm talking about, like, yes, I, I do believe original thought is still a thing that people are capable of, and original creation and new ideas and whatever. Um, however, I'm living my life in this culture, in this time, with all the history behind it. Uh, I'm not the first person ever that everything I do is just this new thing. So I, I have all these cultural touchstones and ideas and feelings about those ideas and like, um, you know, stories and there's archetypes to build off of and there's all this stuff that's already there. And I sometimes, you know, some people might write an essay, put it, you know, like I want, I'm going to write an essay about this book so I understand the book better. Go for it. You know what I mean? Like you could write a book about the book and it would still be a different book. Because it's about your understanding of the book, or whatever, your retelling, or there's so many different ways to do it. And, and I think, like, it is personally valuable to use different media to express the same idea. Um, and it's something I want to actually concentrate on doing more. Oh, obviously, it's incredibly culturally valuable, too. And that is really all I want to talk about today. Um, but it, it is something I want to concentrate on more. I don't think it will be redundant. Uh, I think, obviously, there's a, you know, you have to balance things. There must be a balance with everything. Um, but I, I do believe that it can be something incredibly useful um, as, as an artist, as a person, as an individual, um, to try and take certain ideas that, that are strong enough and create them in different ways and, yeah, just express them with different media. Um, it kind of fell into my lap to explore that idea because it started to be impact me negatively at first with, you know, this writing songs, performing the songs while I was painting about the same subject and realizing there was this crossover of, of now I'm feeling this way more and more rather than feeling resolved. And now I feel the opposite. And I feel that by doing this consciously that I can resolve things better by digging deeper because a different medium will force me to approach the topic differently. With that, uh, we'll see you on another time. And uh, for the, I don't know how many weeks it's been since I've done an Artist Life podcast, and this is probably the shortest one I've done because I've abandoned all format. And, uh, you know, for the, this, currently, this is my Artist Life. <laughs>